For too long, our community has been held back by the lack of a unified voice advocating for local businesses. Now we have an opportunity to change that by unifying our local chambers to become the Greater High Desert Chamber of Commerce. We owe it to our businesses and to the economic future of our region to make this bold move. The local chambers of the high desert have a proud history of supporting local businesses and together we are stronger. As members of the GHDCC, we will become over 700 local businesses strong and represent half a million constituents as we leverage a louder, unified voice at the local, state, and national level. With one membership granting access to all that GHDCC has to offer businesses, we'll see lower membership costs and a more streamlined and coordinated calendar. Together, we will experience greater and vastly expanded networking opportunities, as well as increased influence and visibility for your businesses. We know businesses are stronger together, and the GHDCC will be a catalyst for business growth a convener for leaders and influencers who make things happen, and a champion for a stronger community. Through the GHDCC, we are reinventing the local chamber for the benefit of the greater high desert and our community businesses. To make this vision a reality, we need the participation of all of our members. Be on the lookout in the coming weeks for this mailer from our local chamber you'll find important information on how to vote in support of becoming the Greater High Desert Chamber of Commerce, as together we unite and amplify our voice. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for joining us for the Hesperia Chamber of Commerce State of the City. It is my pleasure and honor to introduce our MC today, Marshall Hafrob with the Mojave Desert Air Quality Management District and also your chairman of the board. Hello, Marshall. Hey, Mark, and good afternoon, everyone. Wow, it is state of the city. I can't believe it's already state of the city again. This is crazy. I remember just a year ago, we were, we were doing this at the, uh, at the courtyard by Marriott in Hesperia. We were all together. We were all in person and <clears throat> we may not be in person, it may not be gathering like we normally would. Of course, this year has been full of Zoom meetings, phone calls, uh, FaceTime, a lot of FaceTime. Um, but nevertheless, it's state of the city, and it is. Uh, it always has that special feel, you know. Even when we're we're doing our normal luncheons for the chambers, and then we get to state of the city, and the state of the town, state of the county, it always just has. A special feel to it. I don't know if you you think that or not, but I, I certainly feel that way. Uh, so I'm I'm honored to be here. I'm honored to be your MC this afternoon, uh, and I'm honored to introduce uh, a fellow chamber board member and a pastor with the Victor Valley Christian Church, Neil Harris. He is going to lead us in our invocation and the pledge of allegiance. Good afternoon, Neil. Hey, Marshall. Thanks, buddy. It is. Uh, it's good to be with everybody. This is certainly uh, this is certainly different uh, to be doing it virtual, but I'm excited for this opportunity. So, will will you take a moment and uh, and join me in prayer? Our God and Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you for this day and uh, for this opportunity to gather, even though we are doing it differently than we typically would. I ask that you would uh, be with us in this time. That as we uh, look back and as we look forward to uh, all the great things that have happened and will be happening in the great city of Asperia, that you would uh, be glorified by our efforts and that you would see um, to it that, uh, that our efforts come to fruition, that uh, where we set our energies to uh, make this a better community, that you would bless those efforts. God, thank you for uh, our, uh, our many members who serve uh, to make this a better community. May you uh, be at work in and through each and every one of us. I ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, if you will join me in our Pledge of Allegiance. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. 
Thank you so much, Neil. And yes, thank you to everyone uh, for joining us today. Uh, yeah, this is the State of the City 2020 for the city of Hesperia. Uh, we have, I'm of course a Hesperia resident. We have, I'm looking at our, our participants list right now. We have uh, scores of Hesperia residents on, on the call with us today. Of course, we have residents who don't live in Hesperia, who live in Victorville and Apple Valley and even Atlanto and uh, throughout our, our great high desert. Uh, so we want to say thank you to everyone who is joining us today, uh, whether you're at home, you're in your office, you're even maybe in the car, uh, wherever you are, thank you so much for joining us and uh, being here to hear the uh, State of the City presentation, which we will have for you uh, in just a little bit. Um, I also want to say thank you to our sponsors uh, who are helping to put on this, uh, this event today. Uh, we have three presenting sponsors uh, for today's State of the City. So I want to say thank you to Desert Valley Hospital, Desert Valley Medical Group, Foremost Retirement Resort, and Steno Designs. So I want to say thank you to all of you for uh, sponsoring today's State of the City presentation. And I'd also like to invite each of them to tell you a little bit more about who they are and what they do. So first, I want to welcome Desert Valley Hospital, Desert Valley Medical Group. Hello, and welcome to Desert Valley Hospital and Desert Valley Medical Group. We are honored to provide you with compassionate, quality care that is focused on one thing, you. Our experienced medical team is committed to providing quality medical treatment and to promote your good health in a professional and caring environment. With over 30 providers in a broad range of specialties, and offices throughout the high desert, you are never too far from receiving compassionate quality care. Desert Valley Medical Group has offices throughout the high desert, including Victorville, Hesperia, and Adelanto. And if you are a senior, you can enjoy a wide range of activities, ranging from health education, to safety programs, to fun events at our Senior Wellness Center in Apple Valley. With an urgent care that is open seven days a week, a pharmacy on site, a lab with extended hours, and a state-of-the-art heart center that is equipped with some of the best technologies, we focus on one thing, you. Not to brag, but we're proud to have been recognized as the top hospital for 2019 in the country by the LeapFrog Group along with numerous awards for excellence in clinical care. We're a grade A in hospital safety and have won a distinguished hospital clinical excellence award three years in a row. At Desert Valley Medical Group, we accept a broad range of health plans to serve you. So come and see for yourself how we provide compassionate quality care that is focused on one thing, you. And here to tell us a little bit more about Desert Valley Hospital and Desert Valley Medical Group is doc, Dr. Siddiqui. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Siddiqui. First of all, I hope everyone enjoyed the video. And I want to thank uh, Sam, I know who's on this call also for putting the video together. So thank you so much, Sam, for your awesome work. We really enjoyed the video. Uh, my name is Dr. Siddiqui. I'm the medical director over here at Desert Valley Medical Group. I'm a board certified internal medicine physician. Um, I practice primary care and I also practice hospital medicine. Um, and uh, I want to thank everyone for this opportunity. Um, just a little bit about Desert Valley Medical Group and Desert Valley Hospital. I'm sure all of you guys are familiar with it, but um, this year has been really exciting for us apart from COVID, which has been challenging, but it's, you know, with every challenge comes with blessings, I think. And um, it's been very exciting for us. Uh, we've had a lot of new providers that have joined us. Um, we've had a new primary care doctor who recently joined us. She's bilingual, Dr. Corona. Currently, she's practicing in Hesperia off of Main Street. Uh, we also had a new pulmonologist lung doctor that joined us um, about two months ago. 
uh, from Tennessee, uh, Dr. Viveja. Um, and so we've been having a lot of changes and a lot of new um, in, uh, programs that have been going on. One of the things that I've heard in the community recently in the last few months is that the wait times to see primary care doctors, um, I've heard times as people are saying there's been weeks till they can get in to see a primary care doctor, prompting a lot of local residents to go down the hill to Fontana, Ranch Cucamonga to see um, their doctor. Um, I just wanna let everyone know that um, with all of our new providers that we have, the wait time is no longer than 24 to 48 hours to see a primary care provider. Um, so we're very excited about that. Um, and if you're an employer with a lot uh, with employees and you're looking to add on Desert Valley Medical Group, please reach out to our administrator, Ms. Marie Langley, um, to get Desert Valley on to your um, open enrollment for your employees um, from a contractual uh, standpoint. And we do have evening hours for our working um, patients that are working down the hill or working, you know, until 5, 6 p.m. Uh, we have primary care providers that are offering their services until 7 p.m. one day of the week um, and also on Saturdays now from uh, 8 to 12 or 8 to 1, depending on the specialty. So we're very excited about that. We're looking forward to hosting uh, new members. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Ms. Marie Langley. 760-241-8000, extension 8699. Um, if you have any questions, let us know. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Dr. Siddiqui, and thank you to Desert Valley Hospital, Desert Valley Medical Group for being one of our sponsors for today's State of the City presentation. We appreciate it. Uh, now we want to uh, welcome another of our sponsors, uh, Foremost Retirement Resort. Nestled in the heart of beautiful Hesperia, California, Foremost Retirement Resort is the happening place for seniors. Providing quality of life to seniors for over 20 years, Foremost offers resort-style living with all the amenities and activities you'd expect from a country club community. We are a safe, nurturing, worry-free environment that offers both personal care as well as memory care services. At Foremost Retirement Resort, we not only provide beautiful independent living apartments, but also private rooms and double occupancy rooms to accommodate seniors' needs and their budgets. Oh yeah, I like it here. They're very good girls here. And uh, I like it sometimes, I like it all the time. When one of the girls will come in and she'll sit here and we get a chance and time to talk to me and we talk and everything. And they're real sweet. I think it's wonderful that they're so nice. And I like to see them when they go by and they'll look and they'll wave. And I see them and they see me and I'm waving at them. Yeah, I like that, I really do. We promote resident self-direction, choice, dignity, privacy, individuality, independence, and home-like surroundings. My niece, she lives in Wrightwood, so she found this apartment, and the closet is huge. And I go out twice a day and buy clothes. A built-in stove, an oven, a big refrigerator, but I choose to come over here and eat, for I don't have to eat by myself. The staff here is wonderful. I love them. Oh yeah, everybody's nice. I love them all. The passionate, skilled senior living staff offers ongoing support to residents and their families devoted to meeting the unique needs of each resident. Available 24 hours a day, the staff is there to provide assistance with physical, mental, and personal care. Every day, foremost residents have multiple opportunities to socialize, deepen friendships, and find a source of inspiration and meaning through interactions with staff members and other residents. Give us a call today to schedule a tour to visit our beautiful campus. Foremost Retirement Resort, where we strive to nurture the mind, body, and spirit. And here to tell us more about Foremost Retirement Resort is my dear friend, Niru. Good afternoon, Niru. Good afternoon, Marshall. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. A big thank you to Hisperia Chamber for giving us the opportunity to sponsor this meeting of State of the City. We really do appreciate it. A special shout out to Sam and Mark for trying to download the video and showing it. Really, it's very much appreciated. 
And uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am Neeru Bengala, Administrator at uh, FOMOS Retirement Resort. Uh, my husband and myself have been here in the high desert for, the, for over 38 years now. And uh, long enough to see Bear Valley Road from a two-lane road to a four-lane road and almost 15 traffic lights on it. Uh, we, our family, uh, my children grew up here, went to high schools here. We love the high desert and um, yeah, enjoyed all, all these years with the high desert. To give a little bit history of Formos, uh, Formos was founded uh, 20 years ago to help families navigate a maze of uh, senior housing options. Over the years, uh, Formos had its ups and downs, uh, like any small business. In uh, 2012, Medico uh, Investment LLC took over the management uh, from bankruptcy court, uh, not realizing it was a glutton for punishment. But determination and teamwork of management and staff has brought uh, stabilization to the facility and uh, gratification of taking care of the elderly. Uh, we have wonderful residents. Uh, one of our residents is a uh, 107 year old and tells us stories of Woodrow Wilson. He's been in this facility for 20 years. And um, with COVID, of course, right now we are on a lockdown, but I would personally, once things get better, I would like to invite everyone to come to hear stories of these wonderful seniors. Uh, Foremost is also home of a uh, terrace room at Foremost. It's a grand uh, ballroom that can accommodate a variety of events. Uh, weddings, quinceañeras, and business meetings. And hopefully we will get back to normal life soon to get all these uh, events going. Uh, Foremost also believes in uh, community outreach. Uh, Foremost organization is a nonprofit arm of Foremost Retirement Resort and uh, holds uh, bingo every Monday evening in historic Old Town Hesperia. This is organized by volunteers and the profits are dedicated to uh, Victor Valley College Foundation and uh, also to the youth of our community. So in uh, conclusion, I'd like to thank uh, Hesperia Chamber again for giving us the opportunity to sponsor this meeting of State of the City. And everyone have a great afternoon and a great week. Thank you. Thank you, Miru. And uh, thank you right back to you for sponsoring today's State of the City. Uh, we appreciate uh, your service to the community and we appreciate uh, Foremost's um, membership and sponsorship as always um, partnering with the Hesperia Chamber of Commerce. So thank you. Thank uh, you. We appreciate it. All right, so we have another uh, sponsor to introduce to you. Uh, we are fortunate, like I said earlier, to have three presenting sponsors for uh, this State of the City presentation today. And uh, next up is Stino Design Studio. And here to speak about Stino Design Studio is Sophie Stino. Sophie, can you hear me? All right, it looks like Sophie's having a little bit of uh, difficulty um, fully connecting to our presentation today. Um, so I will. Uh, I will read a, a little bit for uh, for the design, Stino Design Studio. Um, again, thank you to them for the sponsorship. Uh, Stino Design Studio is uh, an architectural firm and they are uh, honor, honored to sponsor this yearly update from local government. Uh, they work regularly with all regulatory agencies and take pride in their business relationships with all personnel across all agencies to get commercial, residential and industrial projects and plans designed and approved for building permits. Stino Design Studio is fortunate for working in the high desert and appreciates all of the agencies, clients, and friends. Well, we appreciate you, Stino Design Studio, and Sophie, thank you so much for sponsoring today's State of the City presentation. We also have uh, several business sponsors, uh, so I'd like to introduce those, uh, those to you now. Uh, first, we have Advanced Disposal. Alaska USA Federal Credit Union, Farmers Insurance Clinton Alford Agency,
Desert Community Bank, Hesperia. Heritage Victor Valley Medical Group. HARP Business Services. And Saddle Rock Reverse Mortgage. Thank you to all of you also for sponsoring, uh, being business sponsors for today's presentation. Uh, the Hesperia Chamber of Commerce has three partnership levels, leadership, presidential, and executive. Now we are absolutely grateful for all of these businesses who, who are partners with our chamber. And I'd like to recognize our partnership levels. Uh, our leadership partners are Advanced Disposal, City of Hesperia, and Hesperia Recreation and Park District. Our presidential sponsors, Apple Valley Communications, Desert Community Bank, Desert Valley Hospital, Desert Valley Medical Group, High Desert Art and Frame, Has Heritage Victor Valley Medical Group, Jimco Marketing and Promotions, Spring Valley Lake Country Club, and Saddle Rock Reverse Mortgage. And our executive partners, Farmers Insurance, Clinton Alford Agency, Foremost Retirement Resort, and Stino Design Studio. Now we'd like to introduce to you and recognize our newest members of the Hesperia Chamber of Commerce. So to do that, I'd like to welcome back our double O CEO, Mr. Mark Crefield, and he will introduce them to you. Hey, Mark. Hey, Marshall, thank you so much. Uh, we, of course, we're grateful to our members that have joined our chamber, especially during uh, these tough times and we're indebted to them. And it's a great opportunity to recognize them uh, this afternoon. Adela Valenzuela, certified family nurse practitioner, J. Cruz Gymnastics, Juice It Up in Apple Valley and Juice It Up in Hesperia, San Joaquin Valley College, West Country Heating and Air, and Woodard Realty and Property Management. Again, thank you to these members who have joined us uh, during these tough times, and we appreciate uh, your investment in the Hesperia Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, Marshall. Absolutely. Thank you, Mark. And again, thank you to our new members. We're happy to have you with us. Speaking of members, we are, um, we are happy and thrilled to tell you that uh, several members are ce celebrating some special anniversaries uh, with us uh, in their memberships with the Hesperia Chamber of Commerce, and I wanted to tell you about them. Now, these, uh, these anniversaries are, we are recognizing for the months of July, August, September, and October. So it's a little bit of a lengthy list, um, but just so you know, we're, we're including all of those months anniversaries in together. At five years, we have a Magic Moment Custom Cakes, Holiday Inn Victorville, Mojave River Valley News Group, LLC, and Porgy's Liquor. At 10 years, we have Family Assistance Program, Lewis Management Corp, Omega Design Group, and Out of This World Barbecue. At 15 years, we have Beck Oil, Cisneros Brothers Plumbing, Collision Auto Repair Specialists, Cars Body Shop, and Fish Window Cleaning. At 20 years, we have Bear Valley Party Rentals, Little Caesars, and Midway Home Solutions. And our big one celebrating 25 years with us, Victor Valley College Foundation. Thank you to all of you who are, have remained members of the Hesperia Chamber of Commerce. We are happy to have you. And we are of course thrilled to celebrate your long membership with the chamber. Now we are going to present to you some reports from around the community. Uh, this is something similar to what we do uh, every other week with our coffee break update. Of course, those are uh, mainly municipal updates. Today we have uh, updates from our community here in Hesperia. Uh, so we're going to start with the Hesperia Unified School District. And to do that, we have uh, President of the Board of Trustees, Eric Swanson. Good afternoon, Eric. Eric, can you hear us? Good afternoon, everyone. So um, I have a bazillion things to talk about in one minute. So we'll get right to it, that's all right. So um, one of the things I want, I am unmuted. 
I am. Oh, I guess you cannot hear me. I'm guessing. We can. We can hear you now. You can hear me now. Okay, yes. good. <laughs> all right. So, all right. I got a ton of stuff to talk about in just a quick minute. Um, one of the things that obviously everyone knows that we've been um, under distance learning since March 16th. Uh, we are still have to follow the uh, public health uh, department guidelines, which are making it very, very difficult because we have to get it down to so many, a, a number below the number of cases we have. But we have applied for the elementary waiver. So be figuring by the time that's going to hit, We'll be uh, at least get our elementary schools possibly but back to some type of uh, education or probably some type of blended learning or some type of uh, you know smaller class sizes uh, in the meanwhile what we're doing is we have these uh, cohort groups which we have 199 groups that are serving about 1900 kids you can see we're still not able to touch all the kids we need to, to all the students we need to catch out there uh, one of the things that we, a lot of people are, are asking questions about is transportation you know, our buses can carry 82 students, uh, but under the transportation rules, each bus will only carry about 13. So you can see that where our staff is just going all over the place trying to figure out how in the world we get most of our students back. Um, another thing, we have been uh, allowed to do out, uh, outdoor athletic conditioning because, you know, the kids got to have some type of activity, but most of this is just mostly the sports. We're still are hoping, uh, hoping that uh, CIF will uh, allow uh, fall sports in the uh, in the December. So we're working with that, just hoping that's all going to go together. If anyone has any questions uh, on our website, we do have the 2021 planning guide that shows exactly what we're we're talking about for distance learning, hybrid learning, uh, trying to figure out how to reopen schools. So if you have any questions, you can go to that. Um, the last thing I want to touch on here is our nutritional services are still serving meals Monday through Thursday from uh, 11 a.m. to noon at the following sites, Carmel, Cedar Middle School, Cottonwood, Eucalyptus, Sperry High, Sperry Junior, Juniper, Lime Street, Maple, Mesa Grand, Mission Crest, Ranchero, and Topaz, along as with, with uh, 24 other bus stops that were actually serving meals. So if you have questions on that, you can go to lunches.hisperiausd.org. And that's all I have. I switched it down as small as I could for you. <laughs> uh, hey, I'm impressed. Well done, Eric. Thank you so much. That was great. And you know, I uh, I happen to know somebody over at that uh, that Juniper site. Uh, so yeah, I think <laughs> I think they're doing a great job. Thank you so much for the update. We appreciate it. Um, looking looking forward to uh, more good news coming out of the Hesperia Unified School District. Uh, we also uh, invited the Hesperia Recreation and Park District to give us an update today. Uh, unfortunately, they were unable to uh, join us um, at the time that we were going to do the, uh, the update, uh, but wanted to just direct you uh, and your attention to their website and to their Facebook page. Uh, you can find them online at hesperiaparks.com, uh, as well as a search for Hesperia Parks, uh, Hesperia Recreation and Parks or Hesperia Parks on Facebook, and you'll find them. Uh, they have a number of things going on right now um, in, in the, uh, I guess, Halloween season. Um, they have a Halloween chalk your walk, park scavenger hunt, uh, a jack-o'-lantern luminary walk, and a costume photo contest. Uh, so, and they also have uh, some things they're working on for Veterans Day. So, uh, again, I would direct your attention to hesperiaparks.com or find them on Facebook uh, and get more information on how you can participate in their virtual events. Uh, lastly, um, I wanted to uh, encourage you if you are, are a Hesperia Chamber of Commerce member. Now, I know we have uh, numerous people on our call today, and again, we appreciate you so much for joining us. Um, this note is specifically for those of you who are, who are current Hesperia Chamber of Commerce members. Um, we are planning uh, a Zoom meeting on November 5th uh, for um, an endorsement vote for the uh, merge to the Greater High Desert Chamber of Commerce. Um, we are going, we are working on sending out information directly to the primary contacts of the Hesperia Chamber of Commerce membership uh, so that you will have these details right, uh, right in front of you and you can put it on your calendar. Um, you, you know when and where to be, um, how to register, all of those things. Uh, so look for that in your mail. Um, you saw, probably saw that in the video if you were here with us uh, as we started today at noon. Um, but you saw there's that little printout with the logo at the top of it. That will be coming uh, in your mailbox soon and then you will have the details on that. Uh, so we're looking for the participation of every uh, chamber member possible, the primary contacts of the 
membership possible. Uh, and we look forward to, uh, to your endorsement vote. Um, so we are going to move forward. Oh, and one more thing um, before I forget, of course, I, I mentioned it before, every other Friday we do our coffee break update. And so we have that scheduled for this Friday. Of course, we have sponsorship opportunities available for that. And to do to participate in that way, you can uh, contact O CEO, Mr. Mark Crefield. Um, he, you just send him an email uh, and he can tell you how to do that. Um, and of course, we would love to have you joining us as well for that um, to hear updates from the uh, city of Atalanto, uh, the city of Hesperia, the city of Victorville, and of course, the town of Apple Valley. We appreciate uh, those who uh, come and present for us and uh, those who want to sponsor and as always those who want to join the call. So uh, mark that on your calendar this Friday, we will be doing that at 9 a.m. All right, so without any further ado, we want to offer to you as promised the State of the City for Hesperia 2020. And to kick us off, we have the Mayor of the City of Hesperia, Mayor Larry Bird. Hey, Larry. Hi, Marshall, and uh, thank you to the Chamber uh, for letting us uh, come in and give you uh, some highlights of uh, the direction we're going. And uh, while it's been a very difficult year, and as you mentioned very well, Marshall, we didn't expect to be in this position a year ago, and we enjoyed being together with everybody, and we hope to be able to do that uh, sooner versus later obviously safely as well. So uh, in any event today, uh, we have a, a wonderful opportunity to present the state of the city. And so we've had some great folks uh, uh, involved with this process. And so on behalf of our city council and on behalf of our city staff, uh, we present to you today, our state of the city. Hello everyone and thank you for joining us today for this unprecedented State of the City Address. 2020 has been a year filled with challenges. Together we have faced a pandemic and an economic downturn as well as a host of other challenges that have really tested us. Through it all, I've been so proud of our residents and our business community for their perseverance and their stick to -itiveness. In today's address, the City Council and I will highlight accomplishments over the past year and recognize some of the brightest among us, those who have helped us make Hesperia a unique and amazing community. Hi, I'm Mayor Larry Bird, and it's my privilege to be able to give my shining star as a council member to the Haproff family. I have Nicole here, who uh, was one of our lunch heroes as a lead food service uh, worker over at uh, Juniper Elementary and for Hesperia Unified School District. She was out on the front lines, one of our essential workers during the uh, spring when everyone was quarantined and sequestered at home. She was out there giving lunches every day, and it was my privilege to be able to be alongside her during that time. But wow, uh, she is an amazing person and does a great job there. On my right here, as I, I have Marshall Haproff, he is uh, the chair of the uh, Chamber of Commerce, and he also is with the Mojave Desert AQMD. And so uh, we are so excited to be able to give this Shining Star Award to the Haproff family, uh, an up-and-coming young couple here who are going to be the leaders of the future. And so I'm excited as your mayor and as a council member to be able to give this to you. And so on behalf of our city of Asperia, I'd like to present this to the Haproff family and congratulate you guys. The pandemic really affected city budgets across the nation and especially here in Hesperia. It was not easy to prepare this year's operating budget with a number of unknowns related to the revenue and the economy. The City Council remained committed to not placing a tax measure on the ballot this year. While revenues are tight, we understand that recommending a local tax would hurt residents and our businesses who are struggling in the current economic climate. With the intention of being both conservative and cautious with the budget, the City Council approved an operating budget that included a 10% furlough of City staff. Standing in solidarity with our community, the City Council and the City Manager also took a 10% pay reduction. In the coming months, the City of Esperia will continue to be good stewards of the resources entrusted to us. We look forward to a robust recovery and the continued growth and stability of our community as a whole.
In response to the COVID-19 pandemic, the city of Hesperia has declared a state of emergency. Since March, the city has remained committed to providing essential services in support of our residents and our business community. The city has worked in conjunction with the San Bernardino County of Public Health in following guidelines for COVID restrictions and helping to share information about programs available to help businesses with the challenges they face related to required closures and the related economic downturn. In May of this year, the city hosted a COVID-19 testing event in the Civic Plaza to provide a convenient opportunity for symptomatic residents to obtain testing. In an effort to demonstrate an accurate positivity rate of our collective communities, the San Bernardino County Department of Public Health is now encouraging all residents to be tested. Information on the availability of testing, as well as stats on the positivity rate and other demographic information, is available at www.sbcovid.com. In support of our business community, Hesperia has emphasized that all of our local businesses are essential to the community, and we work to support reopening efforts in the county. Earlier this year, the city waived special event permit requirements for businesses wishing to install special temporary signage to alert customers they are open for business. In solidarity with the business community and wishing to help restore normalcy, the Hesperia City Council will consider a resolution on the October 20th, 2020 Council meeting, which petitions the state of California to recognize the County of San Bernardino by sub-region. This will allow communities like ours with low positivity rates to reopen. Cities throughout the County of San Bernardino have joined forces in this petition as we eagerly await a response from the state of California. As sectors have begun slowly reopening over the last few months, the city of Hesperia is sensitive to the fact that metrics for reopening have been changing and evolving since the beginning of the pandemic. The pandemic and economic downturn have affected communities across the nation, and Hesperia is no different. While there has been a slowdown in business activity over the past few months, activity has not stalled. Meaningful infrastructure projects like the expansion of the sewer lines along the freeway corridor will allow for future business expansion. Hesperia is also eagerly anticipating the opening of the Kaiser Medical Campus on Escondido Avenue near Main Street, which will be open by the end of this year. Built on 10 acres on Escondido Avenue, the 54,000-square-foot Kaiser Medical Office Building Complex will include 16 primary care offices, 8 specialty care offices, 46 exam rooms, a nurse treatment center, 8 optometrists, optical dispensing, physical therapy, and ancillary services. This facility is a great addition to our community, providing health care at a convenient location for residents across the Mojave River Valley. In other development news, community development activity was strong during the 2019-2020 fiscal year. By the numbers, there were over 3,000 permits issued, as well as 243 single-family home permits. Over 12,500 building and safety inspections were conducted, and nearly 1,800 new business licenses were issued. Hesperia welcomed several new businesses to the community as well, including Kalichi Town Restaurant, specializing in Sinaloan and Japanese fusion cuisine. The Chop Stop Restaurant, specializing in delicious chopped salads, bowls, and wraps. A new Aldi Market, located on the east side of Hesperia on Bear Valley Road. Bath and Body Works in the Gateway Center near Target. And DD's Discounts on Main Street at 9th Avenue. I want to thank you and the amazing work that you do for our community. It does not go unnoticed, even with the coronavirus and all that stuff that has put a real hard dampener on, on many of us. But your work does go recognized and the amazing commitment to our community. Your, your work with Relay for Life is what touches me the most with that and everything. It's, it's just amazing. So on behalf of me and our community, present to you Perfect. this year's Shining Star Award. Thank you. Thank you. Paving projects are underway on both the east and west side of Main Street with an investment of $1.5 million for city street improvements and flooding mitigation. 
In addition to rehab and paving of Main between I and C avenues, there is paving work being done at Main and Pyrite in conjunction with the installation of a box culvert that will alleviate flooding in that area. Looking ahead, phase three of the Ranchero Corridor project is anticipated to begin construction as early as July 2021. This project, which will widen Ranchero Road between the underpass and the interchange, will be constructed in phases to minimize the impact to the motorists. The Ranchero Corridor is an important east-west corridor in the Mojave River Valley, carrying more than 15,000 motorists each day. The Ranchero Corridor project consists of three phases of capital projects, including the Ranchero Underpass, which was completed in June of 2013 at a cost of $27 million, the Ranchero Interchange, which was completed in May of 2015 at a cost of $60 million, and the Widening Project, jointly funded with San Bernardino County and San Bernardino County Transportation Authority, with a total cost of $54 million. The project benefited from grant monies from the state of California in the amount of $3.9 million. The project also includes the complete removal and reconstruction of the bridge over the aqueduct near 11th Street. When construction begins on the project, there will be detours installed to divert traffic. However, delays should be anticipated. Residents are encouraged to follow the city on social media for important project timeline updates. Maintaining and improving roads continues to be a budgetary priority of the City of Hesperia each year. Street improvements were done on Hawthorne Avenue, Lilac and Palm Streets, as well as portions of both Mesquite and Peach Avenues. On the horizon is a traffic signal installation project at Main Street and Timber Lane on the east side of Hesperia. The city received a Highway Safety Improvement Program grant in the amount of $899,000 for this project, which will provide 74% of the funding needed to design and construct the project. This project will provide a much-needed access to residents on both sides of Main Street who use this intersection to access their homes. The project is anticipated to be completed in 2021. My choice for the 2020 Shining Star is Suzanne Backus. Unfortunately, Suzanne isn't able to join us to receive her award in person. Suzanne has been a volunteer with the City of Hesperia since 2012. Currently, she volunteers at the animal shelter as a dog walker and provides staff with any behavioral or medical concerns, assisting our staff with their 95% adoption rate. Volunteer time records were not kept prior to 2019. However, since 2019, Suzanne has volunteered with Animal Control for 305 hours, and that was prior to the seven months that she has been unable to volunteer due to COVID. Suzanne is a Community Emergency Response Team member and was a volunteer with the city's CERT program. She volunteered many, many hours with our CERT program. Suzanne was in charge of the earthquake exercise that all participants ended their 20, 40 hours of training. She oversaw the exercise along with any continued training and drills as CERT members were involved. Her duties included ensuring our victims were made up to simulate what CERT participants would actually see during a disaster. Suzanne was responsible for the organization and maintaining the supplies in the city CERT trailer. With her organizational skills and dedication to the city CERT program, all participants were provided supplies to conduct training, as well as provided an emergency supplies kit to take home for their families. Suzanne's love for our shelter dogs and her continued dedication in volunteering with our animal control staff and commitment to our community is truly appreciated. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart for making our community a better place. This award that I am holding will be presented to Suzanne Backus for her continuing volunteering services to the city of Hesperia. This year, Hesperia has a measure on the ballot, Measure N. 
titled Hesperia Sustaining Affordable Water Supply and Ensuring Responsible Growth Measure. The vote for Measure N will take place at the same time as the general election. Measure N asks residents to decide on amending zoning laws within the city of Hesperia. This measure will help to ensure the city's existing and future water supplies are sustainable and affordable. It will also reduce maximum density for both single-family and multi-family dwellings. Additional information about Measure N is available on the City of Asperia website, and we want you to know for the first time we're giving you the opportunity to make a decision on this. We want to know what you think, and that's why we're giving that to the taxpayers and our citizens of Asperia. Adoption rates at the Asperia Animal Shelter have surpassed 95%. A drastic improvement from a live release rate of 38% in 2016. We are so proud of the hard work and dedication of our shelter staff, volunteers, and the rescue groups with whom we partner. Caring for homeless pets is a responsibility that we take seriously and will continue to prioritize. On behalf of the City of Asperia, I would like to thank the community for their support and remind our veteran community that the Hesperia Animal Shelter offers free pet adoptions to those that have served our country. For the first time in recent memory, adoption kennels at the Hesperia Animal Shelter have been empty on several occasions. Shelter staff has gone above and beyond to network adoptable animals and ensure that homeless pets are adopted into loving families. Special emphasis is placed on loving each animal and going the extra mile to give them a fresh start. Little Benji is a great example of love in action at the Hesperia Animal Shelter. One of our animal control officers found Little Benji behind a dumpster with a broken front leg, and our veterinarian recommended amputation. Knowing he needed extra love and attention, shelter staff made contact with a big-hearted person who was prepared to give Benji the love and care he needed. This is just one small example of how the Hesperia Animal Shelter works hard to maintain a positive difference in the lives of homeless pets and the community. I would like everyone to know my friend Chris Stengel, and I bet a lot of you do. If you have been on a volleyball team, a basketball team, youth soccer team, football team, and if you've been to Hesperia Days, you know Officer Chris Stengel, who has given between five and six hundred hours per year the last 18 years as a reserve officer. And Chris, not only on the behalf of the citizens of Asperia, but on behalf of myself, Chris put me in an ambulance, made me go to the hospital, and made it possible for me to be well enough to come back to my family in a couple of days, because I'm stubborn and he's more stubborn. And I thank you for that, and I thank you for your good heart that looks for the youth of Hesperia, along with your wife, Angela, that helped so much and have given so much. This is a small token of our esteem and love. Well, thank thank you. you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, you're I'm going to hug you. Oh. I get to hug yes, you. Yes, all Massey COVID up. Thank you. I appreciate this, and thank you for everything. We are so proud of the men and women of the San Bernardino County Fire Department who serve us here in the city of Hesperia, as well as all the men and women serving the Hesperia Police Station from the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department. This year has been especially challenging for our public safety professionals, and yet you continue to hit it out of the park. Calls for service continue to rise, and our law enforcement and fire personnel continue to impress us with their professionalism and dedication to the well-being of all of our Asperia residents. So on behalf of the City of Asperia and the entire Hesperia City Council, I want to extend our most sincere thanks and gratitude for your tireless service and dedication. Your efforts make our community a great and safe place to live. Your service is valued and appreciated more than you'll know. Deputies at the Hesperia Station continue to show they are the best in the desert, responding to an impressive 85,000 calls for service in 2019. 
Legislation enacted over the past several years has decriminalized several serious criminal offenses, and our deputies are tasked with the important and difficult job of law enforcement and public safety. Thanks to their hard work and dedication, in 2019, violent crime is down 12% from the previous year, and property crime is down 18% with fires raging across the nation and calls for medical assistance on the rise, firefighters stationed in Hesperia continue to go above and beyond in providing service here in Hesperia. In 2020 alone, Hesperia fire stations responded to more than 200 fires and 3,000 calls for medical assistance. For both sheriff's deputies and firefighters and paramedics, COVID-19 has presented a frightening and challenging element to already challenging professions. Their commitment to public service is exemplary, and we're thankful for the work they do on our behalf every single day. Hello. I'm here at the uh, Hesperia City Hall Council Chambers, and I'm here with David Penn, uh, retired pastor of the Church of the Nazarene here in Hesperia. And for the year 2020, David Penn is my uh, Hesperia shining star, uh, what I like to refer to as my Hesperian of the year. This is long overdue. David is an absolute stalwart um, supporter of the city of Hesperia, and more importantly, the city council. Uh, since I was elected in 2010, David has been steadfast in his support of the council. And there's never been a time when David hasn't been willing to take a phone call, talk after a council meeting, or pray for us when, as has been the case many times in my tenure, um, we have been somewhat under attack. So David has been that, that steady support system for all of us that I so earnestly um, appreciate. And it is absolutely my pleasure and my honor to present David with the 2020 uh, Hesperia Shining Star Hesperian of the Year Award. David, thank you so much. Thank you, Bill. I am blown away, and uh, it's a joy to be able to stand with the council. You guys do the hard work, and our prayer is that God will make Hesperia a city of righteousness and holiness, and that his people will be blessed through all of your leadership. Thank you so much. Couldn't, can't appreciate it more. And this, this, this right here is, is a great example of what Hesperia council people um, have enjoyed and have been blessed with. So once again, uh, my greetings to everyone. I so wish this was in a different set of circumstances. We were all together. Hopefully soon that'll be the case. Uh, until then, cheers, Hesperia. Thank you. This is Mayor Bird, and I have a wonderful opportunity to give the Mayor's Award to John and Devin Thompson from Thompson Family Plumbing. Now, you could say all the different things about them, the fact that they have expanded to Lake Havasu, and they go from one side of the county all the way to the other into Riverside County and all around this region. They do a great job with plumbing. They are one of the very best. But what I want to tell you that the reason it sets them apart is not only do they do a great job as a small business, they also have a great heart for people. And I can tell you as also a principal that I've come to them and said, hey, we've got a family that needs support and they have been there to help and take care of them. And so I just want you to know that not only do I give this to them as small business owners and uh, for all the wonderful things they do through that organization, but for their very hearts, their giving hearts, they are difference makers and they are those up and coming people 
people who are going to continue to make a difference in the city of Hesperia for a long time. So it is my pleasure here to be able to give to both Devin and to John this. This says, thank you for helping us to build our community. John and Devin Thompson, Thompson Family Plumbing, the Mayor's Award for 2020. Congratulations, Thanks and I'll step so over much. here, oh, and I'll make sure that I give you this. And uh, you. anyway, uh, congratulations, and thank, thank you guys you. for just being a just a wonderful tribute to our community. Great parents, <laughs> great small business owners, and just people with great heart. Thank, thank you, you Barry. That concludes our presentation. On behalf of the City of Asperia, I'd like to thank you for viewing the 2020 State of the City Address. It has been my privilege to have served as your mayor for the past two years. Living a life in service to others is both humbling and rewarding. I am blessed to be your mayor, your neighbor, and your friend. I look forward to seeing you out in the community and eagerly anticipate the day that we can meet together again. Be well, be safe, and I look forward to seeing you very, very soon. Take care. Well, we look forward to it also, Mayor Bird. Thank you so much. Uh, congratulations to all of the uh, fellow Shining Star recipients uh, and the mayor. <laughs> Oh. oh man, you can't, you can't see because I have a background. Well, now I have to clean up my desk. Thank you. Good job, buddy. I don't know. Pretty, it, but you're only good I know you can't really see that all at once. Set my background up, but they just covered me in uh, in dots, uh, hole punch dots. This is awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you. And thank you to all of you for joining us today. Again, congratulations to all of the uh, Shining Star recipients, the Mayor's Award recipients. Um, I, I got all these thoughts all over me, but um, also uh, my I think my wife really deserved that far more than, than I did, um, especially because she's on the call. So I have to say that while she's here. Um, but sincerely, thank you so much. Uh, we are absolutely honored. Um, and I am I am always fortunate to, to get to do this uh, with you, to uh, be your MC and uh, to, to be the chair of the board for the Hesperia Chamber of Commerce uh, Board of Directors. Uh, I want to remind you again, of course, that we have our coffee break update this Friday uh, at 9 a.m. You can register for that. Um, and also, if you're interested in being a sponsor, of course, contact uh, WO CEO Mark Crefield, and he will tell you how to do that. Uh, and then we want to unmute everyone to say, uh, to, to, to say hello and goodbye and to say thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor Bird, for uh, the State of the City. Thank you to all the council members who presented. Uh, thank, you, thank you to Sam Thatt, of course, from State of the City Presentations for uh, putting together and for helping us run the PowerPoint today. And thank you to everybody. Thank you uh, for joining us. And I hope you have a safe week. And uh, if anyone wants to come help me clean up all these dots all over my desk, I welcome it. <laughs> Great Goodbye. job, Marshall. Thank Great job, everybody. It was Thank wonderful you. to see all of our shining stars that we could see, but we know there's a lot of shining stars in the background. And thank you for that. And have a wonderful day in Asperia. You guys can all unmute yourselves. Yep. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Go. Thursday. Be safe. Be healthy. Bye. Good to see everyone. Bye bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Good to see everyone.